Hello. Hello, guys. Uh, we are live now with uh, the last session that is energy consumption. It will be chaired by me, the, I'm Filippo Lanubile. We will have uh, two papers presenting and uh, on reducing the energy consumption of software from hurdles to requirements and then characterizing energy consumption of third-party libraries using API utilization profiles. So the first uh, paper will be presented by Zakaria Urnani and Pierre Rust. I see there is Zakaria for sure. Hello, Zakaria. And when you are ready to present, okay, mm -hmm. please, you can Hello. start. Okay. So, um, hello everyone and welcome to our presentation um, entitled on reducing the energy consumption of software from uh, hard to requirements on the ESCM uh, 2020 conference. Sorry, uh, we had some uh, trouble with, um, with the camera. So, my name is Zakaria Ornani and I'm um, presenting today in the behalf of my colleagues um, the mainline information on the qualitative study that we conducted in an uh, industrial context um, to understand the problem of green software design and most green software design is an important uh, factor um, uh, in, to take into account uh, within projects. So our objective, uh, objectives can be uh, summarized into uh, three main, main ideas. Uh, first, we um, intend to investigate uh, developers' knowledge and awareness on green software design. Then uh, we aim at understanding the constraints and uh, hurdles that developers are facing and their uh, tooling needs to apply a proper uh, green software design. And finally, we want to identify the main um, uh, awareness means that developers would uh, react to uh, and uh, create a, a better understanding of the issues and responsibilities of, uh, around uh, software energy consumption. So first, let's, uh, let's start with a quick methodology description. Um, this, this figure shows the main steps of our study, starting with uh, participant selection, where we aimed at uh, expert, uh, senior and expert developers with whom we conducted individual interviews uh, of a mean time of uh, 40 minutes. Each interview got recorded and uh, transcribed and then analyzed based on the grounded theory principles. The analysis phase was um, uh, executed in uh, four main steps, which are uh, open coding, actual coding, uh, selective coding, and data selection. The analysis has been uh, done uh, independently uh, by uh, two uh, authors with a consensus on the uh, final result in order to um, increase the accuracy of the study and um, uh, eliminate or uh, hinder the objective, the subjective uh, interpretation. After analyzing the data, we were able to ex extract some findings and conclusions based on, um, on the core ideas that we extracted. Our uh, findings um, were or are centered around uh, three main categories that uh, are also um, the uh, objectives that we um, that we put uh, for our study, which are uh, developers' awareness and knowledge about green software design, the constraints and tooling problems, and uh, the responsibilities and uh, how to promote green software design. First, developers' awareness and knowledge. Uh, our main concern here was to um, to cover developers' uh, level of awareness and knowledge of green software design, but also um, the, uh, the importance they give uh, this uh, new aspect, and if uh, they uh, they they have already had such experiences in their in the past. So the first keyword here is uh, awareness. Uh, during our study, we noticed that developers are moderately aware about green software design or green problematics in general, but maybe not directly at a professional level, but at least in their, in their daily life, which is a good, a good base for, uh, for future green software design consideration. The second key idea that was evoked is uh, knowledge, where we noticed um, during our analysis that uh, despite the, the, moderate, the moderate awareness um, of some developers of uh, uh, software energy consumption issues, they still have very limited knowledge on how exactly um, to, uh, to, to, to detect the, such energy bugs 
and how to deal with with uh, with bugs to enhance the energy footprint of the of their software or their project. Maybe there is some problem. In, uh, I don't see any more uh, Zakaria, the presenter. Uh, he's coming back. I think I'm having a connection problem. Yes, problem. yes. Okay, now you are back, but you should uh, share your, your yes. presentation again. Okay. So um, hold on. I wait to to, present, to share your presentation before you start talking. Okay. Uh, the... uh, Is it up? Is it on? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. So. Um... So uh, finally, uh, being important is a thing, uh, but being um, a priority is another. At least, at least that's what we analyzed during our study, that it's not to prioritize the green aspects in professional development. And uh, some conflicts may even rise with other uh, metrics, exist existing metrics such as um, maintenance or uh, security. The second main category or core idea is about constraint, the constraints and hurdles uh, that developers uh, are facing against software energy consumption considerations uh, and the specification for the tools that uh, they need um, to achieve a better green software design. So the first constraint that was that we analyzed um, during the, the interviews um, is uh, is the time where uh, developers felt like there is or feel, still feel that there is no extra time given during projects. And uh, green software design is, um, is a, as a full matter um, that would uh, need um, a considerable amount of time that hasn't been planned or uh, allowed the, for, for the project. Um, the second main uh, reported problem is the lack of tools as uh, developers have never heard or used uh, tools, such tools to man monitor or evaluate uh, the software energy consumption. The third main problem is the ignorance of developers. Even if our participants seem to be fairly aware of the, the issues, maybe not, uh, maybe they don't have enough knowledge how to deal with it, but at least they're fairly aware about it, they still um, criticize the, uh, the ignorance of the, uh, among the, all the developers of the green aspects and how to deal with uh, such uh, problems. Going back to tools, uh, we investigated the main specifications and features that uh, developers would like to have. Um, so first we had a uh, consensus on having global scores and KPIs uh, that would allow uh, monitoring uh, the, um, the global energy footprint of a software during its development phase. It could use some um, graphical output and uh, should be uh, as simple as possible as reported uh, by our uh, by our uh, participants. Uh, then uh, integrate um, the tool with the current or existing uh, CI/CD platforms, so the developer uh, don't have to change their habits and experiences. An example for that would would be integrate the integrated integrate this such kind of tools with um, with the Git platform or uh, then some other developers uh, evoke the use of static code analysis, but uh, kind of moderately as it's, 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 it will potentially allow identifying uh, the use of bad, uh, bad practices, but uh, not much more as, uh, as it doesn't um, um, take into account the execution environment. The third and last core idea is about the responsibility of the company um, in the process of uh, promoting green software design uh, and the best uh, awareness means uh, that w developers would react to. So first of all, uh, company plus plus, which means that uh, the company is the main guide um, of the process um, of uh, promoting green software design. They uh, they suggest that many, I mean, our participants suggested that many aspects that, uh, that um, 
should be uh, improved, such as um, communication strategy, transparency, etc. One of the main suggested, suggested things is, um, is uh, objectives, where the company is uh, supposed to define objectives. Uh, which will create a big motivation for the developers and clearly spe specify the aims and what the developers are going to be going to be judged on every couple of months. Uh, next, uh, going to the best uh, means of, the, of uh, awareness the developers would react to, our participants uh, reported on the need of having a recurrent um, presentation and quick tips and guidelines rather, rather than uh, chunk, chunks of uh, data and information. On the other hand, training should be utilized to teach uh, and, unfor and inform developer about uh, detailed uh, practices um, in order to form experts that would uh, integrate um, or participate in projects and bring their knowledge and share it with other developers. So in order to create other uh, generate and more generations of developers who are um, fully aware and can manage uh, games of the design problem. And one last thing is um, a green marketing uh, that could constitute an additional selling argument, but should be done very uh, carefully and with the full integrity and uh, transparency to avoid what uh, our participants called uh, greenwashing. Uh, Zakaria, excuse me if, if I interrupt you. Um, we have, as an overall, you have 15 minutes okay. in Okay. In questions, yeah. so there are. Uh, I'll go to the, the conclusions because we had the cut. Yeah, I'll go to the conclusions pretty quick. Um, so, um, uh, so to conclude, uh, we conducted um, a qualitative study to investigate on how to promote software energy consumption considerations and green software design within um, a big company. Uh, which also can be used and expanded for other companies uh, that have that have the same profile or characteristics. Uh, we provide numerous implications for developers, decision makers, tool creators, and researchers that would that will help uh, promoting the green software design concern even more. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Zakaria. Uh, I have a question. Um, you are talking about the requirements and i would like to know who are exactly the stakeholders for these requirements are you able to identify them uh so i mean um maybe not the stakeholders but the one uh, that our study um, um implicate are both developers uh, are I mean, mainly developers and uh, decision makers, because both sides have their own uh, share of responsibility. And in the, um, I mean, the only slide that I, I didn't present, um, it, it, it was the application slide that contained the implications uh, on and the responsibilities of every entity. And we had four main entities, which are developers uh, and uh, decision makers, which are the two main uh, entities. And we had also tool creators so we provided some uh, some some um, some information and some uh, tips to the tool creators on how to provide tools that uh, developers expect. And also the fourth fourth entity is is researchers, where um, we we uh, provided some um, some problematics and some uh, some some paths that should be uh, clarified in order to uh, um, promote the green software design. It's a career. Any other questions? So, if you are short in your answers, <laughs> we can have a couple of these. One is uh, uh, about uh, grounded theory. With, yeah, Mary Sanchez Gordon asking if you reached the, uh, the point of saturation. Yes. So we did. We did. We did talk uh, talked about the saturation point in our paper. So I invite you to. Um, so yes, we did it. But uh, I mean, we were and we were two to to, to analyze data separately. So we guess um, our uh, our study was a little bit accurate. So um, so yeah, we have more details in the paper about that. Oh, of course, yes. Another question. There are two questions from Peter Lupo. We'll show just one, and uh, it says then. Uh, uh, since the cost of energy greatly varies uh, geographically. Uh, do you think that the cost per benefit of green software design will limit its adoption? 
and uh, then actually it's continuous uh, considering these factors uh, with uh, with energy becoming cleaner and cheaper do you think that we will ever see a large adoption of global software development I, I mean i agree that the energy cost is not the same uh the, i mean it's not the same depending on where are you on the planet but if you uh, if you could uh, if you could uh, and store or um, uh, show people how to uh, write a clean or green code or create a, a green software it will it will um, it will not not be the same percentage that we will uh, gain um, all I mean um, every everywhere on, on the planet but at least it will be uh, we'll create a model that uh, developers and uh, uh, companies should show, should follow in order to um, enhance and at least take in, uh, green software design uh, into account because it's not the case right now and the last question from Luis Cruz uh developers show awareness uh, uh, on the energy efficiency of their software is this correct if yes what is the typical approach used to monitor energy consumption yes that's the thing so they are aware that there the are uh, there are uh, some green and uh, some in a energy software energy consumption problematics they don't have they don't have the enough knowledge on how to detect the problems and how the issues and how to deal with them and uh, for the approach to man monitor, there are some primary tools on how to uh, monitor the energy consumption and to get the like the um, the result in joules or whatever. But what the developers need are uh, KPIs, and we don't have uh, the right set of KPIs right now on uh, how to uh, rightly monitor and give the results of the monitoring uh, to the to both developers and the the decision makers, so they can follow the energy consumption of the software. Okay, thank you, Zachary, again for your presentation. I will clap. I'm sorry, sorry again for the for interruption. It was. Uh... And uh, now uh, we will have a second presentation by Andreas Schuller. Hello, Andreas. Hello. He's presenting uh, characterizing the paper characterizing uh, energy consumption of third-party API libraries using API utilization profiles. Um, I remind you, uh, if you skip 10 minutes for presentation, we will have more time for the question. Thank you, Andreas. Okay. Um, let me just switch to the other screen. So um, thanks for the introduction and hello, everyone. My name is Andreas Schuller. I'm a PhD student at the Johannes Kepler University in Austria. And I'm going to present our ESIM 2020 paper, characterizing energy consumption of third party API libraries using API utilization profiles. So energy consumption has become an important non-functional quality aspect in mobile application development. However, according to a recent study from Pinto and Custer, who asked mobile developers how they approach energy-related bugs, the general consensus was to outsource the energy-efficient code to cloud environments. So the question arises, given that mobile resource-constrained devices have become a crucial aspect of people's everyday life, are developers aware of the energy implications of their software design choices? This question was also undermined by the findings presented by Zakaria just prior to this presentation, that either knowledge or awareness um, is not uh, very spread across the developers. So given this premise, the software energy consumption research field showed considerable contribution in recent years, covering areas from energy profiling to software energy measurement to power modeling. And our work contributes to that field of research as we envision um, that in future, third-party libraries that are either maintained in software repositories like Maven Central or GitHub or such alike provide information on uh, their energy footprint. So this would allow mobile developers to make an informed decision about the energy implications of uh, dependent libraries during development. Um, to lay the foundation for our vision in our paper, we investigated a novel approach uh, to software energy consumption profiling. In essence, for our ASM 2020 paper, we investigated the connection between the utilization of the Android API through third party libraries and their energy consumption. Our approach stems from the assumption that the way a particular library or application interacts with its underlying API has direct influence on its energy consumption. Therefore, we like to introduce the API utilization profile, which stem from this general assumption. 
To further show the connection between our proposed UAPI profiles and energy consumption, energy, oh, sorry, energy consumption, we empirically examined their correlation using two experiments. The first one is dedicated to Android I.O. operations, the, uh, whilst the second one examines the UAPI profiles and the connection to the energy consumption based on a popular open source library for JSON document processing. But first, let me give you a definition of the proposed U U uh, API utilization profiles. UAPI profiles are a measure of how a particular method from an application or library interacts with a provided API. To achieve this, we use the dynamic call graph as a foundation to compute the frequency of API interactions of all methods. As a result, we can say that the UAPI profile of a method is defined as one plus the sum of the UAPI profiles of all its called methods. Um, let me give you a small example. Let us assume we have a simple application for which we want to compute its UAPI profile. First of all, the application needs to be instrumented in order to dump the execution trace, which we need to compute the dynamic call graph during runtime. To achieve this, for our scenario, we use the Android debug interface, which allows us to collect the execution traces during runtime. The application is then further deployed and executed on an actual Android device. And using the debug interface, we end up with a trace file, which we parse and derive the dynamic call graph. And the dynamic call graph as a final step is enriched using the pros, proposed UAPI profile computation. So we end up with um, the information on the API interactions per each method recorded during runtime. To empirically evaluate if our assumption that using UAPI profiles can serve as a lightweight approach to better comprehend the energy consumption of a library or application, we defined uh, the following experiment protocol which will in turn be used for our study. The testbed we used for obtaining the relevant data for our study comprises a host PC, uh, which serves as the, we call it the experiment execution coordinator, and it is responsible to collect energy traces. Um, using uh, the Monsoon High Voltage Power Monitor, which is a device which is commonly used in software energy consumption research. Uh, besides that, the experiment execution coordinator is also uh, responsible for collecting the execution traces using the approach that I just described before. Um, the Android device uh, that we used throughout the experiments is the HiKey 960 Android development board with an octa-core ARM uh, big little processor, three gigabytes of SD memory, and the device runs Android version 8.0 with Android API level 25. For each experiment, we collected the energy consumption of a particular execution, the runtime for each method executed, the execution traces, and using the uh, derived dynamic call graph and the collected energy profiles per method, uh, we were able to attribute these energy profiles to the method. So we end up with the per method energy consumption, and we computed the UAPI profiles using uh, the approach just described before. Using the testbed and the defined experiment protocol, we will verify the connection between the proposed UAPI profiles and the per method energy consumption using the two test scenarios. And for the first scenario, we took inspiration from a data set defined by Roja et al from their ASIM uh, 2019 paper. And what we did was we evaluated two different cases comprising uh, different approaches available in the Android API to reading and writing a file of the size of 10 megabytes. The table on the right outlines um, the classes and methods involved in this first scenario. Um, to the results. So in total, we recorded 188 individual test executions on our test bed. We further computed the correlation between the proposed UAPI profiles and the measured energy consumption with the result that for both cases, um, so for the write and for the read scenario, we get a strong positive correlation with our values from for the write scenario of 0.99 and for the read scenario of 0.84. So if we take a look closer look at the data, we can also observe that the UAPI profile, which you can which is depicted in the plots at the bottom. So we have the writing scenario on the left side and we have the reading scenario on the right side, that the overall trend of uh, the UAPI profile 
follows the energy consumption that we recorded, uh, which is depicted in the bottom part of the uh, graphic. Uh, we can also see that, uh, en uh, that writing a file is less energy expensive than reading a file. This also confirms finding from Rocha and RSA 2019 paper. 2019 paper. For the second test scenario, we used Google JSON, which is a prominent Java library for JSON document processing, for which we used the available unit test as a basis for our experiment. The library was instrumented to collect execution traces, and we deployed it to our test bed. From the overview uh, of the packages that were involved in the, test uh, in the test, please refer to our paper. So in total, for the results in total, we recorded 8,635 individual test executions and collected approximately 3.2 million attributed method traces. Um, again, we computed the correlation between the energy consumption and the proposed UAPI profiles. And again, we get a significant correlation of 0.84. Um, um, if we take a closer look um, at the uh, uh, image on the right side, um, which shows the uh, results of the test, we can again see that the general trend or the overall trend of the energy consumption data um, follows the trend of the UAPI profiles. Um, to, um, um, in, in, of the UAPI profiles. Um, we can also see that for um, the uh, UBA API profile computation for, um, uh, for very fundamental APIs, um, for example, from the Java Lang package, which are heavily used and um, therefore spend a wide range in the UAPI uh, computation. However, they only show a low contribution to the overall energy consumption. This is why we are currently investigating possibilities in order to include contextual information or weights into the computation of the UAPI profiles. To conclude, UAPI profiles serve as a lightweight and feasible approach to characterize the energy characteristics of third party libraries. The computation does not involve any special hardware, and there are no alterations to the target device uh, required. Given our results for our initial research, we can derive a general rule of thumb that a significant change in the computed UAPI profiles also hints to a change in the energy consumption. For future work, as I already said, we would like to further improve the UAPI computation. And to do so, as already stated, we are investigating um, to better account for the contribution of different APIs to the UAPI profile, for example, using weight or contextual information that we derive from the collected dynamic call graph. With these uh, final remarks, I would like to thank you for your attention and conclude my presentation. I'll be happy to ask, answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas. So, uh, waiting for questions from the audience. So there is, we have some delay. Uh, we, um, my first question is, uh, would you be able uh, to use uh, your measurement environment to test uh, uh, non-functional requirements about energy consumptions? Um, non-functional requirements? Yeah, for um, example, yes. Um, yes, uh, I think this would be possible. So. Um, I, if I understand you correctly, you mean that a non-functional requirement states that you could say, okay, this is the amount of energy uh, yeah. the application needs to have. Yes. Well, this threshold, we have to be under that threshold. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. I think uh, this, this, this is possible with the scenario that I, that I just pre presented because it will help you to identify uh, possible uh, areas in your application where you can um, start to improve or refactor code. So you can say, okay, well, this is a very busy um, part of my application. This is a very, let's say, a hot path in my application regarding its energy consumption. And therefore, 
um, it's possible to put effort into that area to improve the energy consumption. Thank you. We have a question from Luis Cruz. He asks if you can elaborate more in which corner yeah. is the CPI utility. Okay, go ahead. Um, and then so, he has all other two questions also. Okay. Oh. Um, so. One problem is that um, given the, uh, the, the general structure of the Android API, and basically the Android API is also similar to the Java API, um, you have APIs that are, um, well, let's, let's say, closed in itself. So uh, the API itself uh, just calls functionality from itself. Um, while there are uh, calls, for example, that are very fundamental in the Java API, like from the Java Lang package, everyone needs data types, everyone needs uh, basic functionality. Um, and the problem is that these uh, basic that that basic functionality is spread all over the API. So calls to Java Lang packages is spread all over the J Java API. For example, you have calls to Java Lang from the Java Util package, from Java IO, and so forth. Therefore, um, the computation currently of the UAPI profile um, has some sort of collinearity collinear in, in with that because I cannot or we cannot uh, compute. Um, the uh, uh, the the the, the UAPI profile for a for a specific package solely. It also incorporates the UA the UAPI of the uh, packages like Java Lang as well, and this is why. Okay, thank you. Okay. So I I want to show you the other two questions. If can you implement your approach without uh, running the app? Okay, this is this is a good question because that's something that we are currently thinking of. So um, the the problem is that we have to run the application in order to obtain the data. Um, but I think it would be possible from what we've learned from the from the UAPI calculation that um, at least we are able to using a static analysis approach to identify possible areas where we have a high amount of UAPI and therefore a high energy consumption. So I think this is something uh, where we are currently um, evaluating on, on uh, using a combination between a static introspection and a dynamic introspection of the. And the last question is, uh, how do you isolate the single API calls? Um, the isolation of the, of the API calls is not necessary in our scenario. So we, um, as I said, we just, instrumented the application and we mined all the calls and basically built a frequency profiles for each of the methods that have been executed. Okay, thank you, Andreas. So Thanks. this was uh, the last uh, presentation of the last session of the conference, actually in the last session with the presentation of papers, because actually we have a, a, the true last session will be at uh, 5 p.m. Central European time and we will pre we will present uh, 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 some statistics about this conference we will uh, give awards and uh, we will also present uh, what we will do in two uh, 2021 so if you want to know more uh, please uh, uh, take a break now and come back at uh, 5 p.m. Thank you very much.